you're with Katina Michael at SINS21 with co-convener Kathleen Vogel of the School for the Future of Innovation in Society. We're talking transdisciplinarity today, AI and cybersecurity and socio-technical environmental considerations. Our after lunch Aussie time speaker is Pat Scannell. He's going to talk to us about painting a picture of AI in cybersecurity. And he's been a big supporter of this workshop for the last number of years while we've run it out of the DC office at the Consortium for Science Policy Outcomes. Pat, welcome, and please introduce yourself before you uh, deliver your talk. Yeah, hi, I'm uh, Pat Scannell. I, uh, I don't know how to introduce myself here, except that uh, I, I think I heard earlier uh, Professor, I think it was Wiggum, say that he has uh, expertise in 10 different backgrounds, and he's learned later, later in his career that it tends to be a, a barrier to him. I tend to be a massively interdisciplinary person, and that generally serves me well when I pull out two or three of those disciplines, but when I flex all of them, it tends to get in the way of things, unless it's at workshops like this where we're, we're dealing with the intersections of emerging technologies and national security and other issues. So hopefully uh, my comments will find a home here that resonate with a few folks. Uh, are you able to see my full screen painting a picture of AI and cybersecurity, Katina? Not yet, so uh, share your screen, Pat, try again. Okay, wait one. It's coming up and it's full screen, so thank you. Great. Well, um, earlier we heard Mr. Weisner and Mr. Burnett providing two different views, one with a lot of slides and one without. Mine's going to air towards a few slides and a couple that are eye charts at the end, but I'm going to try and keep this fairly conversational. As I mentioned, um, I'm an interdisciplinary person. Uh, I, there's always somebody smarter in the room on any one topic than me, but it's my job to connect a few dots. Today, I'm not going to provide the same kind of practitioner kind of view that you were going to get, for example, from Angelo or Tyler Sweat or S.J. Turp or Pablo Brewer, who some of you may know, uh, world experts in, in uh, AI and cybersecurity. Um, what I'm going to try and do is provide you a perspective that maybe it wasn't necessarily apparent to the folks on this call. Uh, I think some definitions are useful. So pretty common definitions in artificial intelligence kind of resemble these remarks. The capability of a machine to imitate intelligent behavior, or if a machine does something that if it was a man, it would be intelligence. Now you can tell these are dated comments because it says by a man, right? Um, this, this, these are very contemporary definitions, but they date all the way back to 1955. Uh, folks like Marvin Minsky and, and Claude Shannon. Um, these, these are still kind of the de facto statements of what artificial intelligence is. And I'm gonna challenge those a little bit later. Audio okay so far, Katina? Absolutely perfect. Great. Um, I think we've used cybersecurity and AI both in this conversation, uh, which is a wide ranging conversation uh, by a number of experts, but I think it's really important to begin to define these things, right? Because, you know, AI has come to mean many things. Cybersecurity has come to mean anything. So the current kind of uh, industry certification uh, domains, there's eight of them. These are the things that we're trying to secure when we secure cybersecurity. And again, I'm gonna challenge these later, but I would, I would argue that these are about as good as a, an industry definition of what do I mean when I mean cybersecurity? I mean securing these things. All right, so this is my money slide, right? Um, some of you, most of you are probably familiar with the expression, um, here be dragons or here be monsters that would show up on ancient mariners maps when they got to the edge of the known world. Well, the truth is, is that statement uh, actually wasn't very common. <laughs> the oldest statement that can be this can be traced back to is a copper globe uh, made in the 1500s, uh, actually about 1500 uh, to 1510. And it had on it this typo here at the bottom, H-C-S-U-N-T uh, Dracones. Uh, and so there was missing an, a, an I, but Hicsunt Dracones, uh, Latin for here are dragons. This is the graphic that I think we're facing when we talk about AI. We're standing on the edge of this cliff, we're looking down, and here be dragons. Um, 
Now, this is an age old concern, right? Uh, Socrates was concerned that reading would screw up memory in the oral tradition. And, you know, through the, you know, uh, Middle Ages, the fear of books and coffee houses, to, you know, influencing the decline of learning newspapers. Even in the Victorian age, novels, particularly, uh, there was concern that novels were feeding depravity in women. Uh, it was the it was important technology, the printing press, that was having unintended consequences. But even trains would injure the brain and electricity would kill us. Uh, you know, the current wars between Edison and Tesla. I mean, at every stage of our civilization, we've been worried about the technology, whether it's radio or television. Um, I mean, this is an age old story. But I argue this time is different. And I accept in the TED Talks I've done and other things that I do that I might be uh, a, an agent provocateur here. I, uh, uh, I tend to be the most uh, avant-garde of, of, of speakers on events like this. And, and, and I hope you take me for what it's worth. I'm trying to give you a, a view to a lens that you might not see otherwise. So I argue that we are not going through a Christensen type disruption right now. We're going through a Cunian paradigm shift. And, and most of you are academics, you're probably familiar with structure of scientific revolutions. But, you know, Thomas Kuhn said in his book uh, that there are these paradigms, right? They're, they're universally recognized. They provide the model and the solution for how we, uh, you know, begin to think about the questions that we're going to ask, how we're going to interpret the information. They create the worldview of the skills that we need, the beliefs and goals, and how we make sense of the world. These are paradigms. But then there's paradigm shifts. Crises occur. There's an anomaly that comes up. And the confidence is lost in the old paradigm. What's really important here, and this is a, a minor level of detail that sometimes gets lost as we talk about paradigm shifts, and we conflate everything together with, you know, you know, Christensen's uh, disruption and just kind of the general disruption uh, term and the, the National uh, Academy of Science has, uh, uh, you know, kind of a clear statement on what disruption is. And they're all very different. And so we lump all this together, Kuhnian, Christensen, you know, standard disruption. But the, the key thing here with Kuhn is that the research that was done before the paradigm shift can't be compared with the research that is done after, after the shift. They're incommensurable. So bear with me. Now, what you were probably expecting me to talk about today in terms of painting the landscape of threats with AI and cyber is, you know, these kind of traditional uh, capabilities on the left and on the right, kind of the new kind of counter AI and quantum computing. And trust me, these are the things that I generally get asked to opine on in the national security apparatus when I intersect with them. But I'm usually the strategist and there's usually somebody in the room better than me at every single one of these points. The problem is, is they're so tied to their discipline, they can't connect to the other dots. And it's my job to connect these together. But I'm not here to talk to you about that today because I think other people have begun to tee up these topics. And the context of the fact that we have all this quote, disruption going on in social, the shocks going on with trust and, uh, you know, disasters and the technology changes in terms of, uh, you know, the scale that we're operating at and kind of the, the synthesis of kind of the, the socio-techno uh, that was talked about earlier. This is the stuff you guys were probably expecting me to talk about, but there's bigger stuff going on. This is the noise of the wave tops and Poor, uh, you guys are hearing me with these kind of hyperbolic statements, but Katina's used to me kind of talking about um, us going through humanity in kind of a, a, a deeper level than most people are, are aware of. So I'm just setting the table here that, you know, you guys are probably expecting me to tie these domains of artificial intelligence and kind of the cyber. Uh, if you take these domains on the left, you know, machine learning, natural language process, and quantum computing, and you were to try and map it to a uh, risk profile of the things that we're trying to secure on the cyber front on the right, you'd end up with a spaghetti map that would be so crazy, it would be ununderstandable. But that would be what you might expect given the title of what I was presenting to you. 
Tina, are you still following me? Sometimes I just prattle on and on and then people They're following you. And okay. uh, I was just I was just writing to someone how you can literally just then you must have had itchy ears. I was writing how you can be so understandable and comprehensible with the <laughs> really complex constructs you're trying to convey, but I understand. Thank you for talking plain language. Oh, thanks. I, uh, I'm a big fan now of what's called the Hailmeyer Catechism. And it basically says, what are you trying to build? What problem are you trying to solve? Don't use any jargon in doing it. Why wasn't it solved before? How much is it going to cost? And I try to do that. And this is earlier in the chat, we were talking about how I believe it was the socio-technical model that was being presented. And uh, Isubio asked, you know, how would you present that in more plain language? And that's the challenge I'm trying to do here. I, I can fake being an expert on any one of these items. And we could spend three hours on, you know, unsupervised learning. I think Angelo would probably do a much better job. But, but the truth is, is when we do that, we, we, we tend to draw too much focus on these uh, wave tops. And I want to take people to take a step back and see the bigger picture. So these are plain language statements. I think the general perception is, is that there's this domain called AI, which is the previous slide that we were talking about. It intersects with the cyber domain that I was talking about just a second ago, which again, let's just simplify it and say it's the eight different uh, uh, you know, security domains I mentioned at the beginning. And the spaghetti map is in between those things. And then to the right, there's this physical, right? If, if we're not careful, AI from China or from some hackers is going to hack our infrastructure grid, and that interfaces with some physical environments like, say, uh, gas valves. We had, uh, I think we had a water uh, facility attack in Steamboat Springs recently. So the AI will hit the cyber, but it might hit the physical. The truth is, is this is how I see the AI cyber present reality, not the future. AI and the physical and the cyber are so closely conjoined at this point, they can't be separated. And I would add another layer, which I'll call the cognitive. This is the hearts and minds, autonomous thought. Uh, there's, a, there's some great articles I recommend on the epistemic domain and the challenge of, of the fact that we might be losing the ability to understand how to create knowledge and make decisions. But it's also, uh, earlier we were referring to, uh, and I think this was uh, Professor Pitt was talking about the, the risk and the structures and the shifts going on with uh, society and democracy and, and civilization. I, I gave a, a, a talk, a keynote a couple of years ago to NATO that was talking about the pending potential disruption of civilization. Again, that seemed hyperbolic, but that was before Black Lives Matter pandemic, uh, the, the recent election polarizations. I think all of this stuff is going on today, but that's not the problem. So earlier I made this comment, and you guys let me get away with it, that we we're going through this paradigm shift. And, and well, what's my evidence for that? Well, first of all, I don't have any evidence. I can't prove it. And moreover, I would argue that you can't prove it within the existing paradigm and mindset. But let me make some kind of statements directionally. When I talk to AI experts, and, and I spent six months uh, helping the world's most robust artificial intelligence uh, platform for the US intelligence agency figure out how it was going to crack the commercial domain. And this thing could do everything. It could consume every phone call, email, text, open source information, uh, you know, dark web information, all of it in real time and make, you know, really informed uh, multi-language uh, human machine teaming insights like almost immediately. When I talk to these folks, I get these comments from AI folks that look backwards, that computers think like people, that 1955 domain, right? Um, that, that people talk about machine learning, that computers learn through historical data, that they, uh, Tyler will talk to you about, uh, you know, providing defenses against artificial intelligence by providing subterfuge in the data such that it clouds other people's ability to read what you're doing. The, the machine learning 
through historical data is a previous construct. The threats are characterized as near peer China and Russia. They have single vector focus. They want to, uh, you know, kind of a, you know, in, uh, influence the election. They want to influence hearts and minds. They want to influence, uh, they want to steal commercial IP against standard targets. The things that we already know we need to secure. But in my mind, that's not at all what I see. We live, we live in a post-certainty world. The last talk I gave at SINS 20 was a fairly complex, uh, very provocative talk that we live in a, a post-certainty world where technology has already exceeded the ability for any one human person or system to understand. Um, the AIs don't think like humans. We think that they can only do so much, but it's only that humans can create and make music and make the great stuff that, uh, you know, uh, Kravalko was, was talking about. But technologies can do so much more than that today. Uh, high performance computing, hyperscale, quantum, think so much, so much further than humans do that to categorize artificial intelligence as something that thinks like people, that if a person was to do it, we would call it intelligence, is, is, a mockery to the power that's available to us through artificial intelligence. Plus, artificial intelligence unlocks a, a massively asymmetric threat profile. And I know I'm just reading the screen here, but not just of near peer actors, but you know, uh, in a previous talk I gave at ASU, I talked about a young girl in Wollongong could create the newest technology that can inflect the human potential curve something that had never happened before with fire, with electricity, with you know, the industrial revolution, but a single person could do that. But that same single person can now have a near you know, state actor level of threat against the United States or other, other entities, a very long tail of non-traditional targets. And- uh, Pat, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Just to wrap, wrap up whenever you can. Yep. There's- Massive changes going on with the humans here. Uh, this was touched on before in terms of highly fragmented and specialized fields. We are so complex that we have to have these deep disciplinary lenses that none of us understand the adjacent spaces. It becomes inscrutable. This is a, a view that I would have of the AI cyber world if we look in the future. The near term, the future is already here. We discussed this earlier when I talked about 80% of the security threats can be addressed by locking up the stuff that we already know how to do. It's really, really important to do that. But if we do that, we think we understand what's going on and we get lulled by a false sense of confidence. But what's going on is there's much more serious problems that are rising that we don't see. What happens during that same window, you know, certainly you know, within five years, is we drive into the future looking into the rear view mirror. We the paradigm that we're working under no longer helps us to understand what's going on. And what happens is we become confused because surprises abound. And in the long term, I think here be dragons. Uh, I won't bother you with collective actions within the existing paradigm, but I'll tell you is when we talk to the national security apparatus at the secretary level and the, and the senior leaders, is we, we couch things in ways that are amenable to them. We talk about tweaking their culture. But the bottom line is, and I'll send you these slides, I know these are eye charts, but we have to radically change the culture to prepare for this. The incumbents can't sense what's going on. The people under the old model don't understand the fight. The, the solutions come in from the outside and it's unpredictable. And this is what I was kind of talking about earlier. So what do we do in the face of this? We have to understand what paradigm shift is and what the mechanisms are. We have to scout the fringes. We have to look for the crazy. We have to be experimentals. We have to give the outside voices uh, you know, a voice at the table. I highly recommend this little cited paper here at the bottom, uh, Reamer and Johnston's uh, paper on disruption uh, within the uh, music industry. And then uh, I'm gonna spend just 15 seconds on this. Here's another great article in 2009 in the Harvard Business Review. This echoes what was going on in the Major Tom video that you played earlier. We're facing something completely different. Today's core technologies, computing, storage, bandwidth, they don't stabilize like they did in the past. There's no equilibrium that, gets, that happens. What we're entering is, for the first time ever, periods of accelerating chaotic challenges that we have disrupted the, the, the cycle of disruption that occurred in the past. 
This is literally the first time this ever happened. I know it's an eye chart and you'll be able to read it later, but thank you, questions. Sorry, that was as quick as I could get through that, but I hope it was at least interesting to some of you. That was absolutely fantastic. And I've posted in some additional links to your talks from previous uh, workshops and from your TED talk and TEDx talk. Um, Pat, I'm going to put the questions into the chat and we're gonna keep chatting away with you just so that we can introduce the group that's presenting in the next 20 minute block. Uh, I'm gonna press stop here in the recording. And thank you so much for preparing that mind blowing presentation.